This video is sponsored by Tab for a Cause. Hey, welcome to 12 Tone. This week's guest video is by Micah from Neurotransmissions, who usually talks all about psychology and the human brain, but this time he's talking about music. Plus, psychology and the human brain. Gotta stay on brand. Before we get started, quick content warning. This video includes a brief discussion of a shooting. There's nothing gruesome or gory, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. Anyway, take it away, Micah. On January 8th, 2011, Representative Gabby Giffords was speaking at a Safeway in Arizona when she was shot in a targeted attack. She was immediately rushed to the hospital and, surprisingly, survived. As time went on, it became clear that she would remain stable, although no one knew exactly what her recovery would look like due to the severity of her head injuries. I mean, the fact that she survived at all is pretty amazing. More than 90% of these kinds of injuries are fatal, but there's a big gap between surviving and thriving. When her recovery began, Representative Gifford had lost her ability to walk, read, write, and perhaps most frustratingly, to speak. As a politician, her voice was such a pivotal part of her life. And after months of physical therapy and occupational therapy and speech therapy, she regained most of these abilities, but speech was still a struggle. See, the injury meant that Gabby had lost some ability to control her mouth and tongue movements, which made pronunciation difficult. And beyond that, she suffered from Broca's aphasia, which meant that she could understand what others were saying to her perfectly well, but struggled to communicate appropriately with the correct words. Simple vocabulary seemed like an uphill battle, and complex sentences seemed like a mountain. But just one year later, Representative Gifford had made a near full recovery, and in her book, A Story of Courage and Hope, she credited her rehabilitation in large part to an innovative form of treatment, music therapy. Oh, I guess I should introduce myself. My name is Micah. Uh, I'm a therapist who talks about psychology and mental health stuff here on YouTube, and I'm a stranger in this here channel, but I'm sure glad I ran into you. Anyway, if I were to guess, you've probably heard of music therapy before, but maybe don't know exactly what it is, so it's time to do some learning, but let's make it a little bit more comfortable, shall we? Hey there, welcome to Micatone. If you're a sentient human person, and particularly if you watch this channel, I guess that music plays a pretty important role in your life. Perhaps lullabies soothe you to sleep as a baby, or you learned how to sing or play an instrument, or you feel your musical taste says something about your personality, or, if you're like me, Shaggy immediately makes you think of awkward middle school dances. Music is connected to so many different aspects of our lives, and so it should come as no surprise that it can be an effective form of therapy. The concept of music as healing is nothing new. Plato and Aristotle praised the virtues of music as a healing force. In the Bible, David played his harp to King Saul to drive out an evil spirit. American Indians used chants to heal the sick. There are literally thousands of examples. But modern music therapy first began during World War I, with soldiers suffering from shell shock and other mental health issues. Musicians were brought in by the military to play for recovering veterans, but the doctors and nurses soon realized that soldiers who were engaged with the music were healing faster. They used music as an outlet to process their emotional and mental disorders, and it served as a practical way to recover from traumatic brain injuries. Wow, so music equals good. But what's so special about music therapy? Well, no doubt you've prescribed yourself some music when you want everything in the world to be okay. It's by far one of the most common coping mechanisms that my clients identify to calm themselves down or just feel better. But as cool as music therapy sounds, it's not just listening to Billie Eilish or hanging in the basement, noticing the world turning while your guitar gently weeps. Nor is it something that volunteers do on the weekend with little kids for fun. Instead, it's a totally legit, evidence-based form of mental health treatment conducted by trained professional therapists that uses music to accomplish specific goals. Although it varies from person to person, there are two big categories of music therapy, receptive and active. Receptive music therapy focuses on listening to music in order to gain its healing effects. This could be with either recorded or live music that the therapist picks. The power of receptive music therapy relies on the fact that we connect with music on an emotional level. It allows for processing of the song, how it sounds, what it means, and a lot more. Listening to music may allow clients to access difficult emotions or change how they feel or use lyrics to explore new insights. This form of therapy has been shown to improve mood and increase 
relaxation while decreasing stress, easing pain, and lowering anxiety levels. And on the other side, there's active music therapy, which engages in music as the focus of therapy. This could involve singing, playing an instrument, and even writing music. The active type shows similar benefits to receptive music therapy, but it relies heavily on self-expression as the focus of treatment. Additionally, since active music therapy involves the client either through singing or playing, it's the most effective for recovery from traumatic brain injuries. Now, that said, both forms of therapy are effective, and neither is shown to be significantly better than the other. Instead, it should be tailored to the client themselves. For example, a child with ADHD may struggle to focus and sit through an entire song, but active music therapy might work perfectly. On the other hand, a cancer patient may not have the energy or desire to play or sing a song, but would greatly benefit from passive music therapy. The reason music therapy can be so effective is because it activates multiple complex neurological processes. For example, consider the song, This Little Light of Mine, all right? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. It's a simple tune, but within this one song you have melody, harmony, rhythm, tempo, dynamics, timbre, and lyrics. In addition, it has a particular emotion attached to it, and it may bring up certain memories if you're familiar with it. In order to register all of that, you're accessing a lot of your brain. Just to hear the sound, I had to activate subcortical structures like my brainstem and cochlear nuclei. This information then gets passed to the auditory cortices, located in the temporal lobe. Since I've heard the song before, I accessed my memory centers, which includes the hippocampus and inferior frontal gyrus. As I read the music, my visual cortex was firing, and when I sang the lyrics, my language centers in the temporal and frontal lobes went off. Since I was playing the song with my hands, that means my motor cortex, sensory cortex, and cerebellum all activated. And if any of you got goosebumps from my impassioned playing, or if you hated it, or if you felt just any sort of emotions, your limbic system was turning on. So it's no wonder that music makes us feel alive. It literally lights up the brain. Well, actually, I don't know about that. I don't know if there's any light in there. <laughs> In your average session, a music therapist will mix both music and talk therapy to work through whatever it is that the client wants to accomplish. The thing is that the goal of therapy is never purely musical. Instead, it focuses on mental or emotional struggles and the techniques used in session are tailored to the specific needs of that individual. For example, maybe using rhythm to help a stroke patient learn how to walk to a beat or a client suffering from depression could use music to talk about how they feel and even change their mood. And music can even help autistic children focus on one stimulus at a time and feel more emotionally expressive. Usually it involves either guitar or piano, since those are the instruments that most music therapists are trained in, and sessions can happen in a wide variety of settings, including hospitals, nursing homes, mental health centers, and even private practice. And music therapy has shown effectiveness in treating a wide range of issues. On the more medical side, music therapy is shown to be effective in helping people recover who have experienced stroke or aphasia or traumatic brain injuries or even dementia. This is actually the case for Gabby Gifford, in fact. Uh, she was able to sing words that seconds ago she had difficulty pronouncing. Although her normal speech was affected, the neural pathways for recalling lyrics to a song were not. And as such, she could use this as a detour to recovery. She was able to strengthen her vocal cords, develop complex sentences, and relearn language skills that she'd lost. It's obvious that music therapy helps people who have lost certain abilities. And this is why many hospitals employ music therapists, because they're so effective. And on the psychiatric side, research has identified music therapy as an effective treatment for several mental health issues. For example, veterans and other clients with PTSD show a decrease in their symptoms like flashbacks, nightmares, and hypervigilance. 
Initial research on individuals with schizophrenia show that it improves mood, which may lower aggression and reduce hallucinations and delusions. Autistic people are better able to express emotion, improve attention, and develop better communication skills. Likewise, music therapy has shown short-term beneficial effects for depression by decreasing anxiety levels and improving functioning. More research is needed into other afflictions, but it's clear that this form of therapy is here to stay. Music meets us where we're at. Sometimes it does more for us than words can. I think that's because it's a dynamic, emotional form of expression that connects and engages many different parts of our brain, and it can help us access feelings in a way that talking just can't. That's why you listen to a sad ballad after a breakup, or why a melody transports us back in time. Music is part of us, and it can heal. Anyway, thanks for sticking around and listening to me babble and watching all the way to the end. And in particular, thanks to Corey for having me on. It's been just a huge blast. Until next time, I'm Micah. Keep on rocking. Pocket gummies. <laughs> They're actually raisins. Thanks, Micah, and expect a call from my lawyer about all that copyright infringement. If you want to see more stuff from Micah, you can check out his video on the psychology of internet trolls or the collaboration I did with his co-host Ali a while back about the neuroscience of autism. I've linked both in the description. But before you do that, I want to take a minute to thank this video's sponsor, Tab for a Cause. Tab for a Cause is a free browser extension that lets you harness the internet surfing you were gonna do anyway and turn it into free money for charity. Basically, all you have to do is click the link in the description to download and install it, then every time you open a new tab or window, in your browser, it'll pop up a small, unobtrusive banner ad and donate the proceeds of that ad to a collection of great charities like Action Against Hunger, Conservation International, and for the Vlogbrothers fans in the audience, the Foundation to Decrease World Suck. It's incredibly easy to use and there's no cost to you, but all told, they've already managed to raise over three quarters of a million dollars for charities, and since it's so easy to use, that number is just gonna keep growing. So yeah, click the link in the description. It's totally free and you're helping raise money for a good cause with your tabs. Hey, wait, is that where the name comes from? from. And hey, thanks for watching and thanks to our Patreon patrons for making these videos possible. If you want to help out and get some sweet perks like sneak peeks of upcoming episodes, there's a link to our Patreon on screen now. You can also join our mailing list to find out about new episodes, like, share, comment, subscribe, and above all, keep on rocking.